Hello, and welcome to part two of my analysis of Cormac McCarthy's best-selling novel, The Road. Today we'll be discussing the conflicts that appear throughout the novel, and how these conflicts impact the characters throughout the story. I hope you enjoy it. The first conflict we're going to be discussing today is the character versus character conflict. As you see on the right, we have some famous examples, such as Batman and the Joker, and Harry Potter and Voldemort. We're going to be discussing the probably the most fleshed out conflict throughout the story, that is between the man and his son. Throughout the story, the two have constant disputes over the actions that the man takes towards other people. These include a scene brought up in my previous analysis where he refused to help a man who was injured. Another example is very important where they talk about a situation that had occurred where the man had shot a stranger who had approached the two without much warning. This course of action taken by the man ignites another argument between the two as the boy thought that killing this person was not entirely necessary. The man responds to this by saying on page 77, You want to know what the bad guys look like? Now you know. It may happen again. My job is to take care of you. I was appointed to do that by God. I will kill anyone who touches you. Do you understand? Throughout the novel, the man is shown to believe that any situation that he and the boy encounter is going to end in a conflict. This is shown in this scene by him saying that anyone who approaches or touches the boy is going to get murdered by the man. However, while the man seems to think that due to his mindset, he has a character versus society conflict, he is slowly building up more of a character versus character conflict with his own son due to their constant disputes over his actions, which almost always end in bloodshed. The next conflict we are going to discuss today is the character versus nature conflicts that are shown throughout the novel. As you see, we've got some more examples on the right. We've got Castaway, The Mist, and the masterpiece of a film known as Sharknado. In the setting of the story, the world has come to an end. Due to this, the man and the son are in a co constant battle with the elements whenever they travel or when they need to get any rest. A specific example of this is a scene when the two are taking a rest in a wintry forest when all of a sudden the trees begin to fall down around them. This causes the man to wake the boy up and tell him, Come on, we have to move. It's the trees, they're falling down. While scenes like this one in particular are able to provide the reader with an understanding of the world's destruction, as well as helping us to understand the conflict that can be caused between the characters and the planet itself, I believe that the author, Cormac McCarthy, had another intent with this scene. I believe that along with identifying the conflicts, he wanted to demonstrate to the reader that certain aspects of our world, whether they're caused naturally or artificially, have drastic consequences to the nature of our world. Examples of this happening in our real world can include the polar ice caps beginning to melt, as well as the various wildfires that had happened throughout the year 2020. The final conflict I'd like to discuss today is an example of an internal conflict, also known as a character versus self conflict. As you see, we have more examples on the right, that being Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story and Carl from Up. In this story, the man is shown to have a very strong moral dilemma, as shown by his actions throughout the story. These can range from him being kind hearted to questionable to violent. Examples of these include when he told his son that he would distract a group of cannibals so the boy could be safe. An example of when he was questionable was when he refused to help an injured man who was dying. An example of when he was violent was a scene previously mentioned where the man shot a stranger who was approaching his son. This, along with his clear paranoia that himself and his son are always in danger and always being chased, as well as his unfortunate backstory, which we discussed in my previous entry, lead me to think that he suffers from a clear internal conflict about his actions. I hope that you enjoyed part two of my analysis of Cormac McCarthy's The Road. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a comment telling me about your thoughts. At the same time as this vlog going up, I have released a blog on my website where we talk about the various symbols shown throughout the novel. Be sure to stay tuned as in our conclusion coming soon, we analyze this wonderful novel in a different literary lens and we'll finally see what lies at the end of the road. Hope to see you again soon.